Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to continue on with our story. This is going to be part four um, and chapter four. So we're gonna continue on with Skunk and Badger and see what these roommates are gonna be up to. Okay, last time we left off was where um, Badger needed important time to go into his rock room and he was telling Skunk, you have to be quiet, I need to concentrate, I cannot have any visitors in there. And Skunk agreed and he tip clawed away. So we're gonna see what happens next if he actually followed directions or not. So this is chapter four. Badger double checked. The pocket doors that separated the kitchen from Badger's rock room were shut. The door to the hallway was shut. I'm sorry, the door to the hallway was shut. Skunk was out there. He was in here. Badger closed his eyes, leaned against the hallway door in despair. How will I ever get my important rock work done? I am finished. His breath came in gulps. His heartbeat ricocheted. Finally, he told himself, you are not finished. Open your eyes. So he did. Badger opened his eyes and saw his rock room. There were the bookcases of rocks in the fireplace stacked. With there, were he, there, there hung his safety glasses and over here, his hardness testing kit, chisels, hammers, saws, scrapers, tweezers, nail brushes, magnifying glasses with wooden handles worn smooth by years of important rock work. And in the corner of the room, Badger's rock table, his rock light, his rock stool. The rock room is mine. Badger's eyes wide in relief. Yes, mine. He tip clawed over to the rock table and switched the rock light on. The light pooled on the table and illuminated an object. The object had pink and gray specks. Some of the specks sparkled. He rubbed his paws together and gently pulled out his rock stool and sat down. He picked the rock, the, he picked the object up. It felt weighty. He brought it close and whispered, rock or mineral? Rock or mineral was always the first question. Even if Badger thought he knew the answer, he began at the beginning, the very beginning. He asked the first question, there'd be time for tests and prying. Eventually Badger would scrape and scratch. Did the object leave a streak on the white porcelain tile? A streak of what color? Later the name would be divulged and uncovered. Sometimes it took a drop of acid, fizzing a carbonate. Other times the pass of Badger's paw over the object's surface caused a sedimentary crumbling. Tools were kept at the ready, magnifying glasses and a microscope, a blowpipe and a Bunsen burner gloves and safety goggles. Um, there was a tiny spatula, brushes of all sizes, and a fine dust blower, which Badger had nicknamed his puffer. But first, before any of this, there was the beginning. There was the asking of the first question. Badger liked the beginning, and at the beginning, he cleared the clutter of assumptions and guesses from his mind. He opened himself up to any possibility and asked the question, rock or mineral? Yes, the beginning was one of Badger's favorite moments, mineral or rock? Rock, mineral, hmm. Badger turned the rock over and over under the light. Minerals were made up of one basic material, one element or an element compound, as the rock scientists say. There tended to be sameness about a mineral. A rock, though, was a combination, a combination of minerals or a combination of rocks and minerals. Two minerals stuck together, that would be a rock. Five, five minerals mixed up in a rock gloomed together in a mass, also a rock. The objects in front of Badger had a gray sparkle. It also had a pink speckle. Additionally, that additionally was that speckle that sparkled. Badger stood up and circled, his eyes on the object in the pool of the light on the rock table. He stopped mid-step. Then he hopped in front of the object, tap tapped a speckle, hmm, and stared. He circled again. He scratched his head and stopped, and he stuck his claw in the air. Ah! He thought inside, chuckled and shook his head. No, 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 no. Suddenly, Badger rushed the table, grabbed hold of the object, and tossed it in the air. The object flew up, flew down. Badger caught it with all his might and yelled out, answer, rock! Badger always answered the first question with a yell. This was usual. What was not usual was the pitter-patter of feet that followed. The door to the hallway burst open. Are you okay? You yelled, rock! There stood Skunk. Badger groaned. He dropped to his rock stool. Skunk stepped into Badger's rock room. Badger set the rock on the table. It clunked. Badger, you yelled. Skunk came closer. Did I? Badger mumbled, rubbing his face with his paws. Yes, you did. You yelled rock loudly. 
Skunk walked up to his rock table and pointed to the pink and gray rock. Is this the rock? Yes, this is probably the rock. You were staring at that one. Rock or mineral? Badger did with his hand in his paw, or his paw in his head. Skunk blinked at him and pointed again. That is a pink and gray rock. A mineral is, Badger said, something in breakfast cereal? Yes, I know. There is a lot of breakfast cereal in the cupboard. I have learned that cereal boxes tell what like to tell you about minerals. Minerals, minerals, minerals. Why do they do that? Minerals do not sound tasty to me. Listen, if that is a troublesome rock, you should get rid of it. Troublesome rocks are not worth their trouble. If you do not mind me saying so, rocks are hard. Badger closed his eyes. Badger? Badger opened his eyes and looked at Skunk. Skunk, you must let me do important rock work. When these doors are closed, you must leave me alone. I must not see you, I must not hear you. Do you understand? Skunk's jaw dropped. But you yelled rock! If you hear me yell rock, I would appreciate if you come came quickly. If I yell rock, leave me alone. That is concerning, but okay. Skunk stood there. Instead of leaving, he leaned closer and frowned in concentration at Badger. How about some chamomile tea? Chamomile's a soothing, smoothing tea. You look prickly, Badger. Goodbye, said Badger. Skunk nodded to himself. Yes, perhaps it is too late for chamomile. He gave Badger a last look and finally said, goodbye. The door to the hallway clicked shut. Badger sighed and breathed in. I have made my point, he breathed out. I have said what I needed to say, he breathed in. Surely there will be no more problems. The pocket doors popped open and an eyeball appeared. Badger jumped. Skunk stuck his head through. What about lunch? No lunch. Skunk looked worried. But you will be hungry. Lunch is the second best meal of the day. I will not be hungry. Do not disturb me. Okay. Skunk pulled his head back through the opening and shoved the pocket doors closed. Badger's head fell into his rock table and thunked. Many, many minutes passed. Finally, Badger sat up, rubbed his forehead, and picked up the pink and gray rock. You are a rock, he whispered to the rock. He glanced at the pocket door separating his rock room from the kitchen. He glanced at the door to the hallway. He expected to hear footsteps coming closer and to see the slight, slight jiggle of the door handle. Badger waited. The door handle did not jiggle. He heard no sounds. It's awfully quiet out there, he thought. He stood up and went over to the bookcase to retrieve his hardness testing kit and thought of skunk always hopping, thumping, frolicking about. Badger set out his white porcelain tile, his penny, his chunk of glass, the talc in a row, and listened closely to the sounds of the brownstone. There was not a patter, our floorboard squeak, or the clatter of kitchen utensils. Where was Skunk? What was Skunk doing? Badger's heartbeat sped up. Ukulele! Badger straightened. He imagined Skunk in his room opening his closet and finding the ukulele. Badger's eyes grew large, then darted. Stop, he told himself. Maybe it is quiet because Skunk is reading a book. There was an entire bookcase of books in Skunk's room, or perhaps Skunk is taking a nap. No, 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 not possible. Skunk told animals to tuck napkins in there and sit there. With Skunk in the room, potatoes flew from pans and sheltered in corners. Peppers were set on fire. On fire! These were not the habits of a napping book reader. Badger stepped toward the hallway door. He needed to check his bedroom. Sit down, important rock work, he told himself. Badger went back to his rock table and sat down. Ukulele, Badger thought and stood up. That was when the back door slammed. This was followed by a whistled tune and a crumple of paper sack set on the counter. Skunk had gone out and returned. Oh, thought Badger. Then, clear as a bell, Badger heard Skunk whisper, Badger is working, must be quiet, shh. Badger sat down with a groan. He ran a paw through his stripe and thought, this cannot continue, enough is enough. Then he sharpened his favorite pencil, opened his field notebook to a fresh page, and he wrote, Dear Aunt Lulu, Skunk has arrived. He is lively, he bounces, he skips, he whistles tunes and clangs. Unfortunately, concentration shatters when the doors are knocked upon and proclamations are loudly delivered. When eyeballs appear unexpectedly between pocket doors, one jumps out of his seat. Therefore, after a short visit, Skunk will have to make his home elsewhere. I know you will understand as you often speak glowingly of my important rock work.
on the um, badger, La Badger. Badger ripped the page from the notebook and folded it into an envelope. He addressed the envelope, stuck on the U United Pelican stamp, and set the letter on the, co on the corner of the rock table, and then he went back to work. With the letter on his table, Badger did not mind the noises coming from the kitchen when Skunk made his lunch and then later his dinner. Badger's stomach rumbled when something sizzled in a fry pan and a pleasing smell drifted through the pocket doors, but he patted the envelope and worked on. When he had solved his rock, pad Badger left the brownstone with the letter. He shut the front door noise noiselessly and then trotted down the front steps and along the sidewalk to the United Pelican mailbox. He opened the mailbox lid and dropped his letter inside. That takes care of that, Badger thought as the mailbox clanged shut. With the spring of his step, Badger turned and headed back to the brownstone. All right, we are going to stop here for part four. We will continue part five. Look out for the next video, okay? Have a good one. Take care.